Hey, GED students. I had a student, Crystal, message me on Facebook. She was doing a GED ready practice test and uh, got a little scared, I want to say. I don't want to speak for you, Crystal, but this happens to a lot of students. See those fractions in an inequality and just lose our minds. <laughs> Just so scary for a lot of students. So we're going to tackle this, but just an FYI, I'm going to do this problem two ways. Um, and I don't care which way you like or prefer. But if you are taking the GED, that means that you do not need to uh, know how to do fractions by hand. Um, almost every time fractions come up on the GED, you will have a calculator. So the first time I do this sucker, I am going to do it with my TI calculator to deal with the fractions. And then for those of us either maybe we're not prepping for the GED, we're prepping for some other occasion, or we just really are ready. We're ready to tackle these fractions. How do I deal with it by hand? After I'm done with that, uh, doing it the first way, I am going to show you a little trick to get rid of fractions. As it turns out, in algebra, whenever we have an equation or an inequality, that ability to do whatever we want, you guys have heard me say that before, we can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. We can do whatever we want as long as we keep our balance. Well, we can use that lovely power of doing whatever we want to do what we've always wanted to do, like always, get rid of fractions. Okay, but let's start with the calculator can handle. Here we go. Okay, so first of all, uh, directions here would say something like solve or solve for x, okay? You can see that I have this x in this inequality, uh, but it is not alone. There's some numbers over there hanging out with x. So I do have the power to solve this to get x alone so that I can see uh, what range of answers would be true or what, what values would be true for X. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna work to get X alone. First thing I need to get rid of is this three. We're supposed to move anything adding or subtracting with X. Um, first when we're solving. But you know, a lot of students would look at this minus sign back here and they would say, oh, I gotta add three. But careful guys, if you wanted three to go away, think about it. What is three plus three? It doesn't go away. It does not zero out. Three plus three is six. You did not get rid of three. So super important, if that's a positive three out there and you wanna get rid of it, you're gonna to have to subtract three. Okay, now again, we can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. So I'm gonna jump across the inequality sign and subtract three over there as well. Now let's see what happens. Three minus three zeroes out just like I wanted. And you say, well, Kate, okay, what about that negative sign? That minus actually belongs to the two thirds. So that's now a negative two thirds X. Now on this side, one half minus three. You know, I know that's negative five halves, but I bet a lot of GED students do not. And so you can totally type this into your GED calculator. Okay, way to do that. We're gonna use the fraction button. That's N over D. So I'm gonna type N over D. Then I can arrow in and put a one in the top of my fraction. Arrow down to the bottom of my fraction, two. Now, be careful to press that right arrow to get out of the fraction before you press minus three. And your GED calculator will tell you, hey, that's negative five halves. All right, now we're almost done, but X is not alone. We have this negative two thirds hanging out with X. Now, what are those two numbers doing? Well, you can see that this negative two thirds is shoved up against X, okay, they are multiplying. Negative two-thirds is multiplying with x. Now, you can always get rid of something that's multiplying by doing the opposite. And some of you guys are saying, Kate, this looks so gross. I don't think I can divide by negative two-thirds. You don't need to. Your calculator will. And some of you guys are saying, Kate, I know another trick. Yes, there are lots of lovely tricks for dealing with fractions. We'll look at those in just a second. But for now, let's just talk about how to type negative five halves divided by negative two-thirds in your calculator. Okay, again, uh, I am going to uh, use the negative key first. So that's down at the bottom, looks like this, negative. And then I want a fraction. So I'm gonna type N over D. And then of course you arrow around it with the five on the top, the two on the bottom. And then make sure you arrow right again, get out of that fraction. And then I'm gonna have you type divided by, divided by. So we're not confused by our two fractions. And then we're dividing by negative. Use that negative key and we type N over D so we can enter in another fraction and two 
thirds. And I see that I get 15 fourths on this side. And our fraction, our calculator handled the nasty fraction. Now let's look at the left-hand side. Multiplying and dividing by negative two-thirds are opposites. They cancel x's alone. Okay, but careful. Be careful, be careful, be careful. I want to like circle this, highlight this, star this. I cannot stress this enough. The one difference, the one big difference between solving equations and solving inequalities is that something happens when you multiply or divide. I call that negating. When you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative. you actually flip the relationship. The bigger number becomes smaller and the smaller number becomes bigger when you do this. So you must flip your inequality sign. I have a less than or equal to, to sign here. That's where I started out, less than or equal to. And I just divided both sides by a negative. That is going to affect the relationship here. And so I'm going to need to flip the sign. Instead of seeing less than or equal to in my answer, I am going to see greater than or equal to. And that is the final answer. X is any number greater than or equal to 15 fourths. Any number that's bigger than or equal to 15 fourths would make this inequality true. Great. Now... I made a promise that I would solve this without a calculator, and I've got a nifty trick. Okay, so you know since the first time fractions made you cry in the third grade, you've wanted the power to get rid of them, all right? Well, the day that in algebra we got these two-sided things, so first we got equations, and now we're looking at an inequality, but these two-sided things that have uh, you know, two expressions that are in relationship with each other. Well, that was the day we got the power to do whatever we want. You know, we can do whatever we want to one side of the equation. Like if I really, really wanted to, I don't know why I'd want to, but if I wanted to like, I don't know, add 73 on this side, I could do it as long as I add 73 on that side as well. Now, I wouldn't want to because it'd make things messy, but I could, I could, and I would still have a true statement. And that's the key here. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. We are going to use that power to get rid of fractions. So here is the trick. The magic wands that I joke about uh, that you can wave to get rid of fractions is what we call the LCD the least common denominator. You are looking for the first time the denominators of the fractions run into each other on their times tables, and it's easy to see with two and three. Two and three, like if I do the two times tables, two, four, six, and the three times tables, three, six, the first time they run into each other on their times tables is at the number six. That number is known as the LCD. Well, the lovely trick that I'm going to use to get rid of fractions is to multiply both sides by the LCD. We're going to multiply both expressions by the LCD. You say, can I do that? Yeah, you can literally do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. And then some of you might say, well, why would I want to? That doesn't sound useful. <laughs> well, take a look at what happens. So let me erase this markings. Okay. I am going to multiply both sides. Now remember, when you multiply, multiplication passes out. So it's the entire left-hand side multiplying by 6 and the entire right-hand side multiplying by 6. And why did I pick 6? Again, I picked 6 because it's the LCD of those two numbers. And something super, super cool is going to happen when you multiply by the least common denominator. Okay, multiplication passes out. Let's do that. 6 times 3 is 18. And now 6 times 2 thirds, you know, when you multiply, uh, we see canceling with fractions. It's so wonderful. Anytime you have a common factor on the top and the bottom, it's going to cancel. So 6 is divisible by 3. So that 3 is going to cancel, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. And my little fraction problem went away. Now I'm just doing 2 times negative 2, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 my fractions went away.
Okay, now I haven't done anything to affect my inequality symbol. And then on the other side, a half of six. Well, if you just do it that way, a half of six. Most of you guys know that's three, but I'll just show you that lovely canceling one more time. Uh, you can divide two uh, by two, that's one, and six divided by the same number two gives us three. And of course, one times three is three. So we can see whether you do it by definition, half of six, or you use the algorithm how to multiply with fractions, uh, you'll still get the same answer. And now my little fraction problem went away. See how that LCD is like a magic wand? It literally gets rid of every fraction in the problem. And now I can just solve this as if there was never a fraction issue to begin with. I'll subtract 18 from both sides. New inequality will be now let's see, 18 minus 18 zeros out, so I have negative 4x. Now this is subtract, that does not flip the sign. It's only when you multiply or divide by negative that the sign flips. And 3 minus 18 is negative 15. Now I'm almost done, but I have to get that x alone. And that negative 4 there is multiplying with x, not subtracting, it's multiplying. See how they're shoved together with nothing between them? So I'll divide both sides by negative 4. And let's see what my new inequality will be. Multiplying and dividing by negative 4 are opposites. They'll cancel. X will be alone just like I wanted. I, watch out, divided by a negative number. I changed the relationship. My inequality sign will change from a less than or equal to to a greater than or equal to. And then this, you're going, it's gross. Negative 15 doesn't divide nicely by negative 4. Yeah, that's why fractions were invented. So I will cancel out my negatives. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, but my answer here is just 15 for that fraction does not simplify. And you can see we got the same answer and what a neat little trick to get rid of fractions. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.